Imagine a world where you have all of your same thoughts and ideas as you do now. Everything the same, except maybe social interactions don't come as easily to you, or maybe you can't think as fast as everyone else, or maybe even you can't walk. Now imagine going to work in this world, only your work is screwing the top on a bottle or sealing envelopes all day. You have all of your same thoughts and ideas, except that someone decided that just because you couldn't think or walk or talk like everyone else, that all you were capable of doing were these monotonous tasks. Oh, and also they only pay you four dollars an hour. So what do you think about this? I'll bet you never thought about it, and I'll bet you don't like it. I haven't thought about this either until this past winter break when my aunt showed me a video. I was kind of reluctant to watch anything that wasn't Elf or Year Without Santa Claus, but I watched it out of respect to my aunt because I knew it was important to her. I didn't really know anything about the video except that it had something to do with disability rights, but probably something I already knew, right? Wrong. Let me back up a few steps. My aunt, Aunt Amy, is my dad's sister. She is an attorney and works for the National Disability Rights Network, where she has a super cool job and she gets to advise about cases having to do with disability rights and violations of them all over the country. Herself has a disability, which gives her an important and awesome perspective on everything she does. So this video that she showed me, which I thought was going to be completely boring and contain no new information to me, well, it blew my mind. Numerous times during the video, I found myself leaning forward, cocking my head, and saying, wait, this doesn't make any sense. Why is this happening? The video detailed an entirely legal attack on the rights of people with disabilities, the wage gap. What I first gathered from the video was that there was some law that allowed employers to pay their disabled employees less than what they were paying their other employees, and in some cases, this difference was literally jaw-dropping. As I watched the video, I thought to myself, I have never heard of this. I thought to myself, this is so wrong. And I thought to myself, how many other people have never heard of this? And this is why I'm standing before you today. My name is Catherine Scherer, and I'm here to talk to you about the injustice that is the Fair Labor Standards Act, Section 14C. So the Fair Labor Standards Act was created in 1938, and the majority of this law was actually very good, as it regulated various parts of the working world and employment. However, Section 14C of this law, while it might have been good at the time, is now outdated. So Section 14C essentially says that employers, given the okay by the government, are able to pay their employees who have disabilities less than minimum wage. Upon receiving the certificate from the government, employers are able to pay their disabled employees based on what they determine their work output is. So for example, if it is determined that a disabled employee produces half or two-thirds of what his or her non-disabled counterpart produces, then that disabled employee will receive half or two-thirds of the wages. Now this is really unfair because nobody should be paid this way, nobody else is paid this way. If other people were paid this way based on how much work they produce, so many other people would also be receiving sub-minimum wages but nobody else is paid this way, so why is it only fair to pay disabled employees this way? In addition, this wage gap has seen an increase that is dependent on how much educational background a person has. So as you can see here, there is an upward trend that starts out with a, just a high school diploma. Um, people with disabilities receive on average about $6,505 less, and then that increases and increases until with a master's degree, this difference is about, on average, $21,000. And that's a lot of money. So this wage gap is extremely detrimental and harmful to those suffering from it. Um, low pay can lead to scarce opportunities in the world and can usher its victims into poverty. In addition, this lifestyle is extremely hard to pick away from, oftentimes, because employees can surrender to the idea that these wages and this work are all they are capable of doing. And this will keep them captive in this life filled with these low wages, government subsidies, and social security benefits. So along with sub-minimum wages, Section 14C of the Fair Labor Standards Act also condones sheltered workshops. So sheltered workshops are places where some people with disabilities work. And the work done here is extremely monotonous and repetitive with little challenge or excitement. In addition, these workshops are separated from other workplaces, which deprives these employees of broad human contact with lots of different people, which can prove detrimental both socially and in terms of their professional lives. Oftentimes, these sheltered workshops are deemed to be training programs, but 
most of the time, this is not the case, as the tra only training done here is the training necessary to do these simple tasks. So these workshops close doors when they say they will open them, and it deprives these employees of making everyday decisions about their lives. Oftentimes, families believe that these kinds of workplaces are the best, or worse yet, the only option for their disabled child, but this is not the case. There are many opportunities for people with disabilities to enter into the working world, and these deceitful sheltered workshops should not be part of the equation. We need to shift the thought process from which sheltered workshop will this person be entering to, what are all the options that this person has, and what does he or she wish to do. We need to realize more that their disability does not inhibit them from following their dreams. This is Andy. Andy almost drowned when he was a child, and as a result of that, he suffered severe brain damage and is not able to walk or verbally communicate. He is, however, able to communicate using a computer, sort of like Stephen Hawking. Because of his accident and its results, many people held low expectations to Andy and assumed that he would never make any meaningful contribution to the world. However, Andy has been working in a bookstore for the past eight years. With an assistant, he is able to scan books and make this meaningful contribution to his community. While it is true that not everyone will have access to the kind of support and technology that Andy does, Andy's story proves that even though, with, even with a severe disability as his, he is still able to combat these low expectations and make this meaningful contribution. So, with all of these issues, it is also important to note that there has been progress that has been made. There are many laws that indicate a goal of integration for disabled people into the working world. However, unfortunately, there are not many enforcements to accompany this law, and so these laws are not seen in real practice. As my aunt said, there has been a lot of progress, but there are also many people still working in shelter workshops in the country, so we still have a long way to go. So what now? What can we do to combat these injustices that some people face every single day? Well, the most important action to take, and the action that I'm going to ask all of you to take today, is to talk about it. We need to begin and extend conversations about this in our everyday lives. Tell your friends, family, teachers, coworkers, and anyone I might come up with, and anyone I might not come up with. In order for change to be enacted, people need to know what is going on. So this is a picture of me and my aunt. Um, like I said, my aunt is the one who introduced me to this issue, and also like I said, she has a disability. She has cerebral palsy. My aunt worked in a place where people were receiving sub-minimum wages for some time. And during her time here, she made two key observations. The first one was that many people did not seem unhappy at their work here. They seemed to be enjoying it. And the second one was that they also thought that this was their only choice of employment, as they thought their disability would inhibit them from doing anything else. She connected these two observations and concluded that this was a result of low expectations, both from others and themselves. Not satisfied with what she saw, she decided to go to law school. And after lots of perseverance and hard work, she graduated and now works at her current job. My aunt is both an example of what you can do when you have a determination and positivity, and she is also an example of why we should not hold low expectations to people with disabilities, because she does have a disability, but she still went to law school, graduated, and is doing amazing things. So while I don't expect all of you to go to law school like my aunt in order to combat this issue, I do believe that there are things we can all do. And like I said, the most prominent one right now is to talk about it. Tell your friends about these sub-minimum wages and sheltered workshops and how much they limit the opportunities that people with disabilities see. Explain how even someone who graduated with their master's but has a disability can still experience a huge wage gap. Talk about these issues and talk about how we can do better. Don't just leave here today thinking, wow, that's unfair. Someone should do something about that. Someone should be talking about that. Well, if not you, then him. Thank you.